basic premise uh, uh, that we go with uh, is um, is that you know you can learn a lot from what other people have done because <clears throat> you don't really know anything unless you've spent money. But the thing is, is that uh, you know people are spending like roughly you know a billion dollars a month. Uh, there's about a billion dollars a month in PPC spend, and um, and if you you know don't have a billion dollars then it's better to look and see what you can see that's succeeding or failing and learn from, learn from those trends. And uh, obviously the best place to look is, is your actual competitors, the real people that are in your market spending uh, money on the same keywords, trying to sell the same services. You look at what they've done over the last, you know, well for us we have you know, six years of history. And you look at how they've evolved their ad campaigns, how they've how they've uh, you know added and removed uh, keywords, how they've tweaked and evolved their ad copy, and when you're starting or when you're you know looking to make changes or improvements um, to your ad campaigns, that's the best place. That's the best place place to look because it's based on not just people's opinions, not just experts' views on what's the best you know best practices for this and that, but it's people betting their actual money on something. And that's actually, you know, it's like, like you know, stock markets and stuff like that, you know, like actually, you know, kind of predicts things pretty well. Um, that's sort of the science behind, you know, keyword research. Uh, it's not really like, you know, a dictionary of keywords that you just search through and, you know, find some that have, you know, similar words in it. Our science is about identifying the keywords that have been successful. Uh, you know, for you know, for for companies, right? We want to say, well, this domain is most successful on these keywords, and this ad copy is the best best ad copy that they've used. And I'll show you now how we get to that. It's obviously, you know, we don't have access to people's AdWords accounts. We don't have access to their Google Analytics. We don't know what their conversion rate is. But we do a pretty, we do the, you know, we do the best job that we can, and I think the best job in in the world at uh, at 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 trying to get to that, like it's kind of like trying to measure not whether whether or not there's um, it's not as difficult as measuring whether there's life on other planets uh, by looking at the stars, but um, but uh, but that's that's more or less what we're what we're doing. We're basically giving you an estimate as to this is the most successful keyword, uh, and and we're really doing. I'll tell you how we're doing it um, in in a second. Um, hopefully, you can all see my screen. You can see my screen, right, Joel? I can. Um... Let's okay. let's then, get a couple visitors. Ooh, we've got a couple visitors who say they're not seeing it. Oh. Okay, majority of people are seeing it. Um, if you're not seeing it, you might want to just log out, log back in. Uh, we are okay on space, so you're not going to lose your sp your your spot. But people, if you're not cool. seeing seeing the screen, uh, you're obviously hearing us because you knew to say no. But um, you might want to log in, log and log out, log back in. So. Awesome. Well, let me just start real quick. Um, the basic idea of SpyFu is that you can type in a, in a domain and uh, see every keyword that that domain has bought, uh, every keyword that they've ever ranked on organically in Google AdWords. Uh, I'm sorry, in, in, in you know organic Google results, and you can also see uh, their entire ad copy as it's evolved over time. I'll just give you a quick example here. We'll just do. Um, this is the suggested one here. New egg is what 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 SpyFu kind of tells me to do. Um, so you can see that we also uh, uh, you know estimate people's uh, ad budgets. Um, we do that essentially with some something related with something like spreadsheet math. You know, you basically take all the keywords that they have, and uh, you know what you figure out what the cost per click is. Um, you figure out what their position is, how long they've you know been on it. In essence, uh, giving you an idea as to a better idea as to whether that position is is you know their consistent position, and then you just kind of add everything up. Um, it's a little tiny bit more complicated than that because we do you know we do have access to a whole bunch of you know Google uh, AdWords data that we've you know people have been gener have generously given to us. So we we kind of it's a little bit more complicated how we estimate it, but more or less if you put all the keywords in a spreadsheet and add them up, you're going to get you're going to get similar results to what we get. Um, so it's reasonably transparent. Um, we also estimate like how many clicks people get, and that's done similarly by looking at where somebody's located on, a, on an organic search page, 
and uh, and how many searches that page gets and how many clicks that position is going to get, and then we pretty much add it all up. Um, again, a little bit more complicated, but that complicatedness kind of adds like 20 or 30 percent to like precision, not not like some kind of wild number. Uh, so you can see on this page there's a lot of um, you know sort of roll up information. Um, you know these are the best keywords. Um, you can kind of give yourself a gut check if you're advertising on on uh, you know for your own campaign. What's the most valuable keyword? Um, I mean, what's 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 your best converting keyword? Well, it tends to be your brand. So when we look at Newegg here, and I'm I, I'm here to tell you that the algorithm that we use to figure out what the best keywords are does not take this into account in terms of like we don't try to like match up like your brand name to to anything. It just happens that out of 179,000 keywords, our algorithm calculates this right. You know that on New Egg, uh, New Egg is going to be their best converting keyword. It's just kind of common sense. Um, and so when we look at that, when I, when I personally see that, I don't even plan this, but when I see that, I know that we're doing a good job at identifying most, you know, basically the most profitable keywords. Um, we also like basic, uh, we, we list all these, you know, so you get all these, you know, all these paid keywords. If you click here, you'll, you'll be able to go to a list and see all of them. Um, you can also download it as a zip file. It's a pretty big domain, so if I click on it, it'll take like um, three minutes, so it's not going to be great for a demo. I don't want to be sitting there watching a little thing go around in circles. It's just, you know, like a gigabyte of data. So, um, then you have the organic keywords, and then you got the, these competitors. And so this is what's called what we call SpyFu Classic. We've had this basic page um, without this ad history stuff here, because you can click on these and see the actual um, ads. Without that ad history stuff there, we've had that for you know six years. Um, so the next the next product in the SpyFu portfolio is called SpyFu Combat, and when you you know when you subscribe or whatever, you get access to all these things. Um, anybody want to throw something out here? I guess we could do we could go into that. Uh, let's go with uh, this one's always a fun one. Shoes.com versus Zappos.com versus PiperLime.com. So this is basically the idea. You put in your domain, let's say that we're Piper Lime. You put in your domain and your two biggest competitors' name, domains, and you hit fight, and it'll um, uh, it builds this uh, Venn diagram. I of course chose like pretty big ones, so it's gonna it's gonna like not not give me the best demo, but uh, we can be patient. When we look down here. What we see is this is their actual um, this is the number of keywords that they've been advertising on over time. So you can see there's quite a bit of fluctuation here with Zappos, um, and uh, nothing nothing majorly trending on either of these other guys. But you can see that Zappos kind of dominates that from a um, from the number of ads perspective. And, and then when you look up here, it's pretty clear that they 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 sort of advertise way more than these other guys. But Let's say that you're starting out in this space and you want to know what the most um, what, what the most uh, you know what 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 is everyone what is everyone betting on right um, so I said that we were going to be we're going to pretend that we're Piper line but let's pretend that we're like an actual emerging you know um, shoe store or somebody that's you know we identify these guys as the biggest players and we just want to like you know um, you know take some take some of the pie take a slice of the pie. Um, we look at these guys. We know that they're probably managing fairly successful um, PPC campaigns. Um, if they weren't, for example, the, you know, they they go out of business because they're spending a lot, right? They're spending. I mean, I don't know. If we could look. We could go back and look at what Zappos is spending or what Shoes.com or Pipeline is spending. But it's you know, jeez, um, I don't know. I, I want to say like at least millions of dollars a month. Now I have to look. It's just uh, <laughs> I just don't like throwing around random numbers. Now I saw a big spike, that big spike, and then it drops back out. Would you say that's a trending? Is is that a trend, or is that that they they went crazy with some testing, and then once they got their metrics, they dialed back? 
Like that big yellow um, spike right there in the right half. Let's see. The big yellow spike is definitely, you know, like if you look here, like in general around, I mean, can you see this cursor or not? I, I do. Okay. So um, if you look here, this, this definitely means that, they're, that they're, they're testing and they're spending and they're doing something, right? Here's the thing is that sometimes um, Google, like Google very seasonally chooses whether or not they want to display, like it's like I think, I don't want to like create any conspiracy theories or anything, but I think that if Google wants, if Google needs to make profit, they will show more random ads like they'll show ads like on um, like they don't normally show ads on really short tail keywords like I don't know world or something it's not something that they show ads on very often and so when you see everybody going up and you see in this case right here everybody's going up right so these guys are going up uh, Zappa's going up Z uh, shoes.com is going up and pipeline's going up this could be a seasonal, a seasonality thing. It could also be that Google's showing more ads, or it could be, um, you know, something to do with the way that we're collecting data and how Google wants to show us ads relative to that. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, but when you see this, this massive departure here, where where Zappos is, you know, relatively skyrocketing and everyone else is staying normal and they're all in the same space. That's Zappos spending more money, or actually we have the budget here, so we could actually look at you know whether or not they're spending more, um, because they could be just showing up on more long tail keywords, which yeah looks like that could be what they're doing. It's kind of all over the place, though, isn't it? Um, definitely looks like they're spending more in the holidays and less after the holidays. That's pretty clear. Um, spending it, so you can see it, see it right here, holidays, holidays. Um, All right. Uh -huh. You can also see it here, holidays, not holidays. So it, there, it's, there's a seasonal thing on, on the shoes. Um, I mean, if we put in like NFL.com or something, it'd be pretty interesting, um, you know, because you can see uh, you can see that that sort of seasonal spending. Halloween.com is obviously insanely um, seasonal. It's all the money gets spent on costumes in one month, um, and so it pays to have the history that we have when you look at you know what you want to be buying and stuff like that. It's really for those seasonal things, and a lot of stuff you know is retail based. Um, Anyway, let me get back to like what this Venn is. I, and does that answer your question? Uh, the the answer is I'm not. Uh, I get a general sense of what's going on there. I can point at the seasonal trend, uh, the seasonality aspect of it. I can point at. Um, it looks like they. My guess here is that they they actually just started buying more keywords and not mm -hmm. necessarily spending more. So it looks like what they did is they. Um, I'm not 100% sure. They could have actually even just gone to broad match from um, from an, from sort of an exact or phrase phrase match based thing, and uh, and because broad match will match your, you know, will match like um, car fast car to Ferrari, right? It'll right. It does weird weird things. So um, I can't say for sure what they did. We would we would know more by looking directly at the the, the keywords that they're buying and at the um, at the um, at like the ad copy and stuff like that. Sure, and that, yeah, I mean so, that could be a leading indicator of you know what you want to look at what they started doing. Um, yeah. In order my, to cause my those changes. My favorite leading indicator. My, my favorite in, uh, you know like charts uh, are where we plot um, the number of, of paid clicks that they're getting versus, or, or the organic, here, let me see if I can show you this. So Zappos, we have this paid versus organic clicks per day plotted over time. And so what this will show you uh, in this case, um, that they're really actually not in any way growing their SEO campaign, 
right? This is this oh, SEO uh, campaign uh, is about as flat as it gets. If we put in something like uh, like Target.com or or is it Walmart.com? This is a pretty striking difference between Target.com and Walmart.com, um, given that they're like obviously pretty direct competitors when you look at this stuff. Um, and this is semi wow. Um I, I remember looking at this like a year ago and it was like super pronounced. But you can see that they're continuing to on average grow their uh, um, their organic clicks. I bet if we look at the if we look at the combat one, we could actually see more more history on that. Um, we just put in Walmart and Walmart alone. I mean, that's beautiful to see because it's it's an example of them doing what you're supposed to do. You know, buy the traffic, yeah. learn from it, and then apply it yeah. in other channels. Exactly. It's 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 interesting to see when you've got like this uh, when you've got like two competitors and one's going all SEO and one's going all PPC. I mean, it obviously it kind of makes sense. <laughs> Walmart uh, is 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 all um, SEO and, and Target ends up going largely um, PPC if you just think of like sort of the values or whatever they have going there. Um, so you look at this organic chart. Uh, it's not telling the story as much as I want it to. Um, interesting that we have these, I think that Walmart's colors are sort of yellow and Target's obviously red, so this is flipped. Um, <laughs> looks like they're both going up. Man, um, let's see what the budget looks like. Mm, they look more like they're parallel now. Well, um, I think it used to be a better a better looking example. Uh, it, it probably ends up being a story of lag, like basically um, actually Target ended up, uh, well, you can actually see that Target's, Target's doing a lot more ads than, um, uh, than Walmart here. Um, and they're they're buying sure. more traffic than Walmart is. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Well, let, let's let's look at that again. I really want to get to the bottom of this because uh, it's you know they're, they're <clears throat> pretty big box, right? It doesn't get any bigger than Walmart and Target. Right. Uh, let's see. Actually, I heard lately that recently that uh, Staples is the second biggest online retailer next to Amazon. I didn't know that. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I. Could you know? It's, I read it, but okay. So this is the value of the traffic that Walmart's getting, and we calculate that based on a uh, you know obviously we we can calculate the number of organic clicks that they're getting um, from their their organic placements in Google. But then what we do is we we do this sort of um, you know what's the opportunity cost? Like what's the value of those clicks relative to PPC, right? And um, and we don't just say, well, a value of a, p a paid click is the same as a value of an organic click, because you can, you know, there's all kinds of things that, that change that. Um, basically, the uh, you know, like you can control the landing page, you can control when it turns, when you turn it on, when you turn it off, you can control the uh, the pre-click messaging, and so on. Um, <clears throat> So, but but it turns out that like if you look at like a really wrong, really really long tail word that gets a like maybe 40 searches per month, the value of that organic click is about the same value as your paid click. It's not like you're going to build like a custom landing page and like a whole bunch of custom things, right, um, for that for that super long tail keyword. So what we do is we kind of uh, I'm just <laughs> get telling you as much information about like I mean probably people are like bored to death. They're like why is he telling me all of this stuff about numbers? <laughs> but, <laughs> but whatever. Um, uh, anyway, so we, 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 it turns out that a keyword that, uh, that costs a lot like per day is, um, is uh, diverges quite a bit. So like it'll be worth like two times as much for a paid click in our algorithm anyway. And uh, um, it'll be worth two times as much for a paid click on like um, free credit report. Um, and like on like a really long tail keyword that really nobody ever clicks on, like um, I don't know, uh, Belkin 46 inch HDMI cable male to female on a keyword like that, uh, they're pretty much the same. 
Um, and so then we calculate this and we figure out what, like, uh, how much the value of your organic traffic is. So Walmart's uh, organic traffic value has gone up considerably. Um, and, and just let's memorize that the value there, or let's just not memorize anything and just bring up <laughs> target. I know this is a really big, uh, I'm, not on my, I'm not on message here, but it's an interesting thing, I think, to just kind of look at how you can compare these two giant, uh, let's see, okay, so they, um, when you, again, when you see oh, this sort of, this, this sort of, like, um, this sort of thing happen, it, this could be just basically the way that, you know, ads are coming back to us, uh, or um, results are, the, remember how there's like the, that big change um, in, because this is all organic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, um, basically Walmart and Target were on the receiving end of good stuff from, from Google. So you can kind of see that, uh, and, and that kind of goes back to that whole J.C. Penny time frame. Right. Yeah. There's definitely a panda correlation there. Yeah. So there you go. Um, not not exactly the trend that I was looking for. Walmart and, and Target diverging. I think that probably happened like a, a year ago, and it's no longer no longer as, as prominent. But um, but it's interesting to see that you can you can actually see the in, in our value calculations how much value Google basically put in the coffers of Walmart and Target and, and effectively took away from, you know, whatever JCPenney and uh, Fortune or whatever it was. Right. Okay, so let me get back to this, this general message here on, on, uh, on these Venn diagrams. What we did is we said, okay, we're going to uh, establish ourselves or we're going to try and break into this shoes market, and w we want to find out what the most successful keywords are. We under understand that, like, you know, Zappo, the, you know, the PPC managers at Zappos and Piperlime and Shoes.com are, you know, probably doing a pretty good job, but they also may be dealing with something where they have to spend a certain amount, right? They have to spend a budget, um, and 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 also, you know, they're managing huge numbers of, of of keywords, and they're definitely going to be imperfect. So you don't necessarily want to trust the wisdom of a single competitor. Um, hopefully, you're smarter than your competitor, right? And you know, hopefully they're making all kinds of crazy mistakes. But the more uh, the more people that are betting their money on a, on a certain set of keywords, the more you can value that. It's like the wisdom of the masses actually is is a good thing as long as it's not like you know people's opinions, but their actual bets. When people are actually betting their money, um, you can kind of trust their vote more than you can sort of trust their opinion. So. The first thing we do is we look at the center, you know, where everybody overlaps, right? And we um, can open this up and look at, you know, what what are all these keywords that, you know, and you look here and you're like, okay, everyone's uh, advertising on the brand uh, Adidas uh, and, and they're all over Adidas shoes. Um, on the left here, um, and this loads in. Uh, right now, it's only got uh, 1,000 keywords, but there's 2,500, so it'll eventually all load in. But um, the first keyword is essentially the best keyword based on the fact that you know it's a relatively uh, that that people have been buying it. Like many of these guys have been buying it over time. So this little timeline here, you've got. In green, you've got Piper Lime. In yellow, you've got Zappos. And can you see this? Should I zoom this in maybe? Um, I don't know if this is Control Plus should zoom me, right? There we go. Let me zoom this in so you can see what I'm talking about. So there we go. if you look here, you've got this correspondence between you know the yellow for Zappos, the red for Shoes.com, and the green for Piper Lime right here in this ad timeline. And you can look at that and be like, okay, well, for Via Spiga sandals, everybody's advertising on it and I've been advertising on it in the last couple of weeks. The taller the line, the higher they were ranked. Okay? So that this chart really, I don't necessarily want you to look at it and try and use the chart for some kind of uh, anything other than just looking at a trend. And so the more green and yellow and red there is, the more it means that they're all buying it consistently. 
and the taller it is, the more it means that they're buying it, you know, uh, in, in a high position. And so what we do is we look at all those things and we say, okay, here's, here's the keyword that people are buying. They're all buying it, and they're, and they're like, consistently buying it. And the, the thing is, is that what you can trust is people consistently buying things, and if what they're buying happens to be expensive, you can trust that it's um, that it's not going to uh, that 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 if they they're not losing money on it uh, or that, that they're making money on it because otherwise if they've been buying it consistently over time and it's costing them money, they'll eventually notice it. That's sort of or, or they'll go out of business uh, if it's expensive enough. You know what I mean? Right. So that that's kind of that's kind of that basic. So just uh, premise. So, like, at a glance, like via Spiga Sandals, it mm -hmm. looks like the green, which I think was shoes.com, they kind of dropped out, but then they gave it a ch – am I interpreting that right? They, That's they, right. All three were advertising. They, the, whoever the green is stopped advertising for a little while, and then they decided to give it another chance a few months later. That's right. That's right. And, and, and honestly, like, you know, we take a we, – we run all these – you know, this is a single keyword, right, and we run – you know, millions and millions of keywords, you know, every month, the exact same keywords. And so sometimes, you know, and we do the first page and the second page, sometimes, uh, you know, they may be advertising on it and um, Day party. And, and we just don't pick them up. Okay, so that, that actually happens. Uh, so when you see them missing like a month, you know, normally I assume that they're probably there, but they're probably not, you know, it's probably not their most important keyword, so they're not, you know, they're not all over it, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so, so that's how that, that's how that thing works. We're kind of, we're harnessing two things. We're harnessing, like, your, your competitors, uh, and not just a single competitor, but, like, the wisdom of multiple competitors, and then we're harnessing the value of uh, 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 you know, we're looking at them doing things over time, and the more they do it, and the longer they do it, the more you can trust that it's uh, that it's been working for them. Okay. Um, now, Mike, I've got a couple questions that fit in with this this part of it. Yeah. Um, one is, uh, Pete asks, why is daily searches on the number one position uh, zero? And then another similar question is, what does the cost per day column represent? Because those look kind of <laughs> pretty low cost for What's supposed it's, uh, to be high volume keywords? Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm either glad or not glad that somebody pointed that out. I noticed it too. Um, I, this is uh, this this is a new grid. Um, we used to have an old, a uh, different grid, and this one uh, is a new one. It's faster, um, and we actually rolled this grid out yesterday or the day before. Uh, and so, when you see this cost per day, this is wrong. I just know. I just now noticed it as a bug, um, and uh, the daily searches <clears throat> is is correct. Um, if we have zero daily searches, this is um, this is probably uh, this is exactly as we get it from Google um, on these daily searches for like broad match. So if you put that in, you'll pretty much get the same thing. So we try to be sort of mm, transparent on it. You can see that. I mean, I don't know if anyone knows this, but um, when when you go to the Google search volume tool, you only they only ever return about like 150 different um, discrete values um, out of out of that tool. So you can see like 403, 403, and uh, 403, and that's not like <laughs> bad data. That's or or it is, but that's that's what we get from Google. But there's nothing that we can actually. There's nothing we can do about it other than just kind of like, I don't know. It's like I think it's better to be transparent with the data, like than to try to do too many crazy. I mean, because we could we we all we we could try to make it a little bit better, but it wouldn't be that much better. Um, and so we're trading we're trading a little bit of like improvement to that data than for, for like. Uh, uh, for the transparency on that, but yeah, that cost per day column is is wrong. And as soon as I'm done with this uh, call, I'll go in and I don't know, beat somebody or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, but still, I mean, assuming that gets corrected, that's a great way of of just 
of assessing the size of a market and the potential for ranking for a keyword. Yep. And then if they if they disagree with it or whatever, then they can go and just buy the traffic. But it's still all the more argument for just buying the traffic versus just saying, oh well, Havana's Havana's flip flops. That looks like a great keyword. Um, well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And this is a, at least an initial way of assessing it and going right. in with a little more knowledge, quite a bit more knowledge than just taking a stab at it and and throwing all of your energy into optimizing for that keyword. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, you also have this organic tab here, but I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to stick with the PPC tools. Um, cause if we went, if we went all, um, if we went, uh, if we went SEO, I went, if we went the SEO angle today, I'd, uh, I don't know, everything would be, it would, it would go crazy. <laughs> It'd go nuts. Um, so the next, Next thing that I want to take you to is called Ad History, and Ad History lets you take a look at um, uh, the entire history, or at least the last couple of years. Uh, we actually have all of the history, but we I think only show like the last couple of years for a given keyword or for a given domain. Um, so let's start with a keyword. We'll start with a keyword. A keyword will be good. So. Um, a nice, big, and you know, valuable one. What you have any ideas there? I was going to go with free credit report, but I could do anything. Let's pull. Let's pull the folks listening. Anybody got any suggestions yeah. for keywords we want to give a try? So it should be a, a pretty, pretty good volume keyword. I would like a. You know, it's more fun to do big, big. You know, interesting keywords. Um, <laughs> Mark suggests the bigger the better. For me. Mark suggests a pretty com competitive one, ringtones. So we've got ringtones, life insurance quote, uh, so a few requests for insurance. Let's see what ringtones turns up. Yeah, insurance is, uh, let's see what ringtones turns up. It might be one of those ones that they, yeah, the, the funny thing about ringtones is that Google actually doesn't return it's 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 one of those ones that they'll return results on when they want to return results <laughs> quite frankly it's um it's uh it's it's weird like that let me show you Is it right up there so, with viagra so i mean you can see that they're returning results and they return results in july and you know who knows maybe they need to make, meet their quarterly or something but like um you can see, you know, everybody that's advertised on it, but you don't get a level of consistency on this because they basically don't. Well, first of all, the companies that are on it are uh, don't tend to succeed, right? Which kind of makes sense. Um, it's too generic for somebody to consistently succeed on. Um, when you see, when you see, basically, you know, uh, you got this one guy, Ring a Phone, though, that could be. Do not buy ringtones. So apparently that's the most, this, is, this guy's probably the most successful on it. But nobody's really, I wouldn't buy this keyword, right? I look at it, there's the people that try it tend to leave. We could even look back a little bit further in history, um, actually quite a bit further in history, to see if anybody's ever been truly successful on it. That one guy's maybe, you could, if, if you're going to do anything, you definitely want to look at at, the, at that guy. Looks like people were more successful on it back, um, you know, back here, back in like 2009, and obviously you can imagine that in 2007 and stuff there's more success there, but by and large people have bought it or shown up on it and don't, have done that once. You see what I mean? Mostly yeah, so they most of these people have failed. Those are probably all people, especially in the AdWords world, who said, "Oh, AdWords sucks. I, I can't make any money." And it's not that it sucks; it's that they're bidding on lame keywords. Or in this case, ringtones was a pretty lame keyword, and so that was their experience with that, at least that keyword. So, uh, ad history is like this tea leaf thing. You know, and you kind of have to read, learn to read these tea leaves. But you look, and I'll show you. We, and and really, it's a matter of browsing around and looking, and then thinking about it. 
Um, or you can watch like I've got like a, several videos where I talk about, and, and you can, and we'll also go through more keywords, and I'll just give you my my input on them. But I look at this, and I'm like, you can tell that a lot of people have failed, and so to succeed at it is, you know, maybe lucrative or whatever, but it's, uh, but it's probably hard. And you know, these guys here are maybe your best, you know, the best ones to look at if you really wanted to. But pretty much, I think it's a not a good keyword to buy. Um, let's try another one. What was? Um, um, we had some life term or long term care insurance. Life in, life insurance quote. Oh, Troy suggested discount hotels. That'd be an interesting one to look at too. That's pretty competitive. This is a winning keyword. So this is what a winning keyword looks like. Notice the difference. <laughs> these people have built businesses on these keywords. I pretty much guarantee it. One thing I want to show you about about ad history is you look at like everybody's line is a different color, right? But when the line changes from like, you know, this dark color to this light color and to this dark color and to this light color, that means that they're changing their ad copy. So you can look here and you can see that oh and this is kind of weird because what happened here is that uh is that I think I think that for some period of time um we were getting no, no, this is this is actually correct. Um because this one's position thirteen. This looks like this looks like our this looks like our fault. Um, we we um, Google recently has been making lots and lots of change. I don't know if you you you've obviously seen how they've changed the formatting and like mm -hmm. the, the title and the and the um, and the you know the URL of like or not the title and the URL but the body and the URL of switched places. And so when we scrape these pages, um, that that plays particular havoc on our on our you know on our data collection um, and here's the thing is that you s when, when by the time we see it you know by the time you know we all you know see that Google has changed their uh, their ads um, it's actually been rolling in to the site for like you know like months and what it does is it's like is that we don't really even notice it it's hard to notice because it's like uh, you know, just some small amount of data irregularities at first, but they'll be testing it, and so it'll like mess up like 10% of our data. So what you what you're seeing here is is Google t testing those um, those results, and it basically screwing up our our data collection. So um, so a little bit of bad data here, um, showing us kind of not necessarily it looks like probably false changes. Looks like they're probably keeping this consistent across December and January. So um, so that's what's going on there. But every time this changes, let's see where are we were in February. So February to March they actually change it. Uh, April, it's a nice use of uh, the phone extension. Get some free right. free real estate there. Yep. And so it looks like April to May they're continuing with this phone thing and pretty much continuing that through. Yeah, this this uh, this new sort of when you're in position two and they make the whole thing really wide is kind of messing with our ability to detect changes in ads for some reason. You know, obviously you can see that that's what's going on kind of annoying. We'll have to circle back and figure that out. Um, so anyway, that's what's pretty much going on here. When, when these things change color, it means we detected the change in the ad, and so you can look at it and see whether or not there's a, an actual change. Yeah, man, look at that. This is, uh, it's, it's like sort of annoying because, uh, because of all this stuff. <laughs> we'll have to get a little bit better at that, I think. Ah, uh, yeah, I see even like this looks like a difference, but it's not really a difference. It is actually a difference. Actually, that's a difference. Um, I bet you anything that that's a, that's a difference in, uh, in Google stuff, though. You see what they're doing there? That at some point they were, 
they were not like um, proper casing this stuff, and then somehow they magically managed to proper case. You know, because they're automatically Google's automatically doing this, right? Um, if you don't have a if you don't have a period, if you don't have punctuation at the end of your first line of body text, they just throw in this uh, um, fairly hideous domain name thing, like separated by a, a pipe symbol. I, I think it's kind of crazy that they do it, but uh, that's yeah. what they, they're doing. That's them experimenting um, with making it look more organic so it gets better clicks. <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's right. That's that's probably what they're doing. Um, it's weird though because uh, I mean I I'm not a fan of it, you know, because there's a sci there's an art to this writing ad copy uh, thing, and uh, you know people have been running these campaigns forever, and it's like, hey, guess what we're gonna do? We're just gonna totally change the <laughs> flow of the ad and not let you know <laughs> right more or less it's like here you go we think it's going to get more clicks well great i mean who who cares whether it gets more clicks i mean honestly it, it, you have this whole thing that you've built out that is driving your business and now all of a sudden it's it's um Things things change. I don't know. Uh, you'll have to, you know, maybe you're, you know, maybe, I don't know. If, I don't know that it's affected my my stuff, but uh, um, but I don't really track my ad campaign as closely as 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 I would if I had. I mean, we spend like five thousand bucks or something. It's not like uh, we can actually spend a huge amount. Um, uh, we just don't have enough. There's not enough keywords for us to buy. Mm -hmm. Like I would buy mm -hmm. as many as I could. Uh, I just there's only a certain number of keywords, a number, a certain number of searches that we get. So, um, but yeah, if I was a if I had a big account, I don't think that I would be pleased with the way that that flow changed. But I guess it's opportunity, right? Um, whenever something like that changes, you can always you can move faster than everybody else. Well, and that's the so, thing. I mean, they're doing it to accommodate the masses who don't know what they're doing, and then it's our job to stay ahead of that curve and adapt to the changes. Right. So this tool so still this helps do that. Keywords. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean definitely. Uh you'll you'll be able to see like what's what's when when you when they're flipping this stuff around, you'll be able to see what's working better because the idea is um these people have been making changes over time and you can actually see uh you know what what's actually performing better for them because they're uh, um, you know they're obviously this life insurance quotes thing costs um, oh we've got we got some messy data there for life insurance quotes um, that's going to be a ten or thirty dollar keyword probably yeah it's uh, but the probably a, you know thousands of dollars a day on this keyword so the idea is that people are testing it fairly consistently um, and and if they're not like running the best keyword or the best ads that they possibly can and then you know there's they're leaving a lot of money on the table and so these guys tend to be making a lot of tests um, running a lot of tests and uh, now I've got a, I'm gonna combine a couple questions for you how do you how do you factor in, there are a couple things that um, I'm curious, and our listeners are curious how you factor in. One is split testing that people just naturally do. Um, yep. You know, when you scrape, are you scraping one time a day, random times of day, multiple times a day? And then also, in the same respect, do you take uh, geotargeting into account? Um, like, do you have servers all around the world scraping this data, or are you just there in Phoenix, um, and is geotargeting a factor in the data you're collecting? Yeah, we have um, we have uh, we have hundreds of servers in about um, 30 or so different cities. Okay. And um, so what we do is is we we have like a keyword, a single keyword. We'll run it on. Uh, on one server, uh, you know, on, on a server in a different location every every time we run it, and we I think we I'm not sure whether or not we uh, 
whether or not we actually move the time around. Um, I have a feeling it does. I know that we had, uh, I can't say with 100% certainty that we actually move this thing around for day parting, but I think we do. Either, the, either way, I think it gets distributed. If it's not deliberately, um, it's it, the randomness to, to it actually works out pretty well. Um, so, you know, um, uh, one thing that we're, we're, we're doing these days is, is trying to get people to think in terms of keyword groups. Uh, and we have like a, uh, another product called uh, Keyword Groupie, and you just can put in like a domain and um, let's, do, let's do like, uh, I don't know, SpyFu or something. And this thing will basically create, you know, groups of keywords. It basically groups all the keywords that you have. Um, this, this set of keywords actually doesn't make any sense. Uh, SpyFu's keywords are crazy, you guys. The organic keywords that we rank on are insane. So if you're looking at this thinking that there's going to be like keyword research tools or something under our organic stuff, it's more like, um, I don't know, porn and <laughs> just all kinds of weird <laughs> keywords that we rank on. Uh, it's hard to, hard to describe why that is. Uh, um, but you can see what's going on here is that we automatically group keywords into, uh, you know, based on what you're buying. If we look at the paid keywords, we might see things. So there we go, keyword research. Um, oh, wow, so, that's great. So those are, yeah. the, we talk about the concept of siloing keywords, and this does exactly that. Yeah, it does, them ex it does it exactly, it does it for you, right? It, um, it, it basically creates these ready-made keyword groups. And uh, we're more or less doing that all across the site. So when you look at, like, you know, an individual life insurance quote keyword and whether or not people are buying it or not buying it, blah, 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 it doesn't really matter what they're doing and whether they're showing up on that keyword. But if you take the keyword group that, it, it, you know, that, that they phrase match or whatever to, um, that's really what matters. And so, you know, it's sort of the direction uh, that we're taking. We'll probably, you know, showcase that sort of um, that technology, you know, first in in recon files. Um, the uh, SEO recon report that we have actually does that with, you know, if you want to if you want to do a content creation, or, you know, a content marketing campaign, we basically create these keyword silos for you, uh, and as, in, a, in essence, it's like, you know, here's the keywords. Uh, if you if you put these keywords into a few articles, you know here's the amount of of traffic that you could expect to 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 capture. Here's the you know here's where you're ranked currently on these keywords. Here's where you could be ranked, and if you were ranked you know 25% higher, you'd get you know like let's say $500 worth of traffic, or you know um, you know. 300 clicks or whatever you want to call it. Um, so this is this is something that that uh, that we are obviously able to do. This actually keyword groupie is totally free. You don't even have to have a any kind of an account with Spyfu in order to just you know do some keyword groupie stuff here. Um, you can put in any any domain and 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 it'll basically do all this stuff for you. Um, it's a labs project. Nice. It's actually been a labs project for a while, but um, yeah, totally free. Um, you can also, by the way, look at it in terms of searches or, cl or clicks per day. So, if you want to look, if you want to build an ad group that's like the right size, see how it's now telling you that Ooh. this group, yeah. So you can drill great. down to the appropriate level. Um, what's the, let's see, let's do like a slightly bigger but not enormous domain, or we can do an enormous domain. Let's do a new egg real quick. All right, so there's all their paid keywords. And we want to show the searches, or the, the, the cost per day, but obviously, you know, 
okay, maybe we're interested in monitors, but obviously we don't want to spend $51,000 a day. So we can just basically drill down to the level, you know, that we want to that we want to spend, right? Uh, or, or you know, what's the appropriate what's the appropriate size of a keyword group for us? See how it just lets you keep drilling down until you get to that right size. Oh, that's and beautiful. That so, I mean, that's... normally you want to have a, a keyword a, a group that's that's the size that you want to you know manage. That's kind of the, the idea. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's great because you know otherwise you have to just kind of guess and then use daily budgets and all that. But this way mm -hmm. you could pick based on your testing budget, based on what you're comfortable with, or whatever. And this gives you sample keywords that you could go put to use. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I mean, you that's... can obviously just you hit add here and it just puts them all there, and you can export them and um, do all that stuff. Very export, cool. It, it's all free. <laughs> the whole thing is free. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's that guy. Um, it gave you a, a general sense of ad history and how that works. So we're, you know, in in combat, we're we're leveraging the power of these uh, of all of your competitors. In ad history, we're leveraging that history. In combat, we're also kind of leveraging that history too, right? Um, so I want to show you. I guess I'll end, in essence, on this, um, our newest, our newest product, which is Keyword Smart Search, and it's really Keyword Smart Search 2.0, because uh, we've had Keyword Smart Search for a while, and the basic idea of Keyword Smart Search is that you, you know, is that we take all of these, these, you know, this combat power and this at history power, and we actually scale it even further, so that Instead of looking at like you know one of your competitors, we're looking at many of your competitors. But instead of thinking of it, instead of starting out by putting in your competitors or something, you just put in a keyword. We calculate the, the, those competitors, um, and then and then we say, well, what's the most successful among these like you know among this entire group? You know which keywords are the best? And the classic example um, that we that we used to do was. Um, you know, that, that I did was uh, in, in Keyword Smart Search 1.0 was, you know, um, back when like PPC first started, it was like a pretty pretty classic example of a uh, I think maybe it was like I don't know some travel company Orbit or or uh, or maybe an airline or whatever. Um, they kind of like they optimized their site and they they spent a lot of money on like low fares because. In the travel industry, low fares is like a, it's an industry term. People are like, you know, what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for some low fares. Turns out, nobody uh, except for the people in the travel industry use that combination of words. Then consumers search for cheap tickets or cheap flights, right? That's what they search for. They don't search for low fares. So they, you know, this is sort of the the curse of knowledge sort of deal and. Um, and uh, and so had they had something like keyword smart search, you know, when they made that mistake, um, they would type in low fares, and uh, keyword smart search through its you know crazy sort of um, computer wisdom <laughs> determines it'll actually return something like cheap tickets. It actually did. Keyword smart search would keyword smart search 1.0 would return cheap tickets like in the top four results. So you're like, yeah. That's good results. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. So, I, I want to so reiterate I that to folks. I mean, people, this is that's a major, major tool because in the AdWords world, you you would have to learn that lesson the hard way, and you'd buy the traffic for low pit fares. If you were lucky enough to be buying the traffic for cheap tickets, also you would eventually figure that out after spending money. But this, you're you're saying, smart search can help people with that learning curve without actually having to spend that money. Exactly. And, uh, and so smart search is actually like a, a pretty, it, 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 it's, it's our most powerful tool, actually. Um, the, the, um, I want to show you what we get when we, turn, when we put in low fares now, because uh, we don't get cheap tickets. Um, what we get is actually, um, it's actually a little bit better. 
Um, this, oh, you know what? That's not exactly what I was expecting. Um, I want to put it in quotes. Uh, it's still fine, but I want to make it a little bit more uh, obvious. Um, and we can come back to this just so that you know that I'm not like this, everything is, is crazy or something. <laughs> but um, so we make we make sure that low fares always comes up. That's like hard coded, okay? Um, that's not so. So don't like look at that one and think that's going to be the most profitable one. We basically say, well, low fares. So you type in low fares. If we don't return to you low fares in the top result, then you're going to be like, this thing's broken. What the fuck? Um, so <clears throat> before, if we had cheap tickets, which is like kind of in like the number third three spot, if we came up with cheap tickets, that's what I would have wanted to see. And so I was tweaking this algorithm, and, and I got this result, and I saw that we got cheap tickets from India. And I'm like, cheap tickets from India? Why do I keep getting cheap tickets from India? What's wrong with this, What's wrong with this computer? Why isn't it returning to me the most profitable keywords? And it turns out, as I thought about it, and as I sort of researched this stuff and looked at what was actually happening, it turns out that cheap tickets from India or to India or whatever, India happens to, from most places, be a pretty expensive place to go to. So if you're buying a specific keyword and you're ultimately making a specific sale, you want that sale to be a higher dollar sale, right? And so that so the, your ticket to India costs more than your ticket to, you know, Denver or St. Louis or Chicago on average, right? That's just the way it is. I mean, when you, I mean, at least looking from looking at it from an American perspective, uh, you know, a ticket to India is you know a twelve hundred dollar ticket. A ticket to pretty much everywhere else tends to like fall in the range of like three hundred dollars. So it turns out that this is actually a better. Uh, this is actually better, which was surprising to me because I was like, you know, the best possible result. And what I really want this thing to do is return to me cheap tickets. But cheap tickets, uh, flight tickets, India is actually uh, is actually your best, most profitable keyword. Um, and you know, I kind of reversed that that sort of um, reversed it all the way back to like you know what was actually happening. And this is actually a really strong, strong keyword, much better as your first purchase. Um, and 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 it works that way all obviously all the way across the board. So this actually suggests so. You can do lazy keyword research, and this will suggest better alternatives. You could just yeah. put in kind of what I call lazy keywords, and this will take and analyze that keyword and and suggest what should be more profitable keywords. That's right. That's right. So yeah, the, it looks this thing looks all like Indian. It's like all India, 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 India. Well, it's, it's you know it's more or less right. I mean, it's that, that it's correct that these are profitable. That, that tickets to India are very profitable, but if you don't want to like deal with you know you, like you know let's say you're a domestic carrier you don't have any Indian flights all you do is just go India minus India right just like you would in Google so you hit that um, hit search and it removes all of those and and notice how quick this is with keyword smart search if anybody used keyword smart search before you put this stuff in it would have these beautiful results but it would take you know 30 seconds because of all of the crazy crunching that we're doing on the back end um, so the other thing that you can do on this is drill in let's go back to just that standard low fares without the quotes and there's this other thing called expert view but uh, and I'll, you know what? I'll get to that expert view in a minute. So the other thing that we can do is, let's say we're building. You know, like if you want to do some kind of, um, you know, what what are the keywords in this space that I should should be looking at to to rank on organically? You can sort of look for like little niches by just drilling into this content with, um, you know. Um, Right here, this is called uh, faceting. Is, is actually what this little technology is called. But basically, you're just navigating into the data, and uh, and and filtering things by. In this case, this is a global broad match. So you're you're filtering things that have a global broad match of, of basically zero to to fifty searches. Um, Mike, how is this is, how is this being sorted by default? Uh, the default is 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 basically that 
profitable angle. You know what I mean? That's what it's. That's what the sort is. Okay. Um, it's it's like what what is the best keyword, the most the most successful keywords, and and. Let me, let me switch to expert view real quick just to give you a sense of what's going on here. So, um, because you can, also, you can also search by domain. So you know how we were doing Piper Lime versus, you know, um, uh, Piper Lime versus Shoes.com versus, uh, uh, what was it, Zappos? You can do that exact same thing here. And that's why this thing is super powerful. So you can do uh, site colon Piper Lime. Well, let's let's require it. Let's require the keywords to be in Piper Lime. Uh, and this is just how you do like in Google, right? Site colon. So um, site colon uh, Zappos Ooh, and okay. site colon uh, shoes.com. Right? So this, and we're not going to filter by any keywords yet, this is going to return to us the same exact results that we get in, 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 uh, in, in combat. Exactly the same results. But let's say, you know, you want to add in, and I don't know, does there any, anybody know any other <laughs> shoes? Let's see, I guess I can find that out. So like, you know, on, on combat, you can create a, a three-way combat, but you just really can't do a four-way combat, even if you wanted to. But here, it's just a matter of going like this. That's it. So now we have something that's, you know, incrementally more powerful than, than, than what you can do in combat, just like that, right? Um, but in here, you know, you've got all of this additional power you can start subtracting or, or adding in keywords you want you know I don't know um, girls shoes so you get all these you get all these uh, girls shoes but you don't want any diesel shoes because you did whatever um, so that's uh that's how that works but let's say we want uh, you can you can actually do any of these sort of these additional columns, right? Um, let me t I'm going to copy this real quick, and I'm going to go back to this basic view. And this basic view lets me, you know, filter by number of words. So if I want like three words or less, I can do that. But what you can do then is switch to this expert view. Oh. I thought you could switch that expert view and actually it would have that. Um, but what you can do here is just do word, uh, words. Um, and then you do uh, like um, basically zero to three would do what we want to do. I could also probably do one to three because there's probably not going to be very many, you know, with that, with uh, zero words in them. <laughs> Um, so we're getting, I don't see any really long ones, but let's make sure just by making it two, because I can see these, if there's three words in here, I just want to make sure I'm doing that, doing that right, yeah, so, oh no, no, oh, uh, okay, so I am doing it right, but if I, I have to hit a plus in front of it in order to require it, and that does it. If you don't put a plus in front of it, it's kind of a suggestion, and so it'll, it'll kind of sort things, um, uh, and, and you know keep things from being in there but not like require them to not be there so there's a whole bunch of things that you can do here and I want to show you where those where you can find those right here under need help okay so all of these are things that you can use here's all of your operators and here's all of your filters so if I want to like filter by for example broad local um, or exact local. I, I would just put in exact local colon whatever. So it's pretty nice. We have a little example in each of these. Oh, um, this is phrase local, zero so, to five, so like that. 
when you when you're talking local, are you talking geography? Because we've got several people who are wanting to know about you know local examples. Like, can this be Correct. used for recon on you know dentists and doctors and realtors and so on? So when you go to so local, um, it's a good point. Uh, like basically, when you go to like the Google keyword tool, and they have uh, they'll return to you you know phrase global phrase local broad local broad global um, and so on right mm -hmm. um, exact and whatever local is US only and okay uh, global is everybody everything all searches okay and uh, yeah that's how we do that that's what those mean okay so, so, but yeah, um, so that's specific to U.S., not necessarily necessarily doctors and dentists. That is more hyper local. Correct. Okay. So uh, let's see. There's um, this star is actually kind of an interesting thing. Um, what? Uh, let me let me show you what that what that does. So let's say. Uh, because you really can't find like the star or this tilde in 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 any in any tool, and it's actually pretty powerful. I want to see if I can illustrate. A, an, I mean, it actually comes up really often. Um, just want to make sure that I can that I can demonstrate it because it's uh, oh before I before I do that, let me just let me just show you. A little bit of the back end about how this is working. So we put in this low fares, right? Before I do that, let me just refresh this because I think that there's maybe a clear button or something. But I'm going to go with low fares. I'm going to hit this search, and then when I switch over here to this expert view, it tells me that I can add the top domains. And what this so when we actually run the search, we take the low fares and then we look up to see which keywords or which domains are the top domains. And then the way that we get back these results is we actually look to see this is kind of like a ten way by through combat. And this is and, and so this is actually the back end query to that to that uh, uh, to this low fares thing. So I think that if we do just this we should end up getting fairly similar results. Um, I guess we actually do have to suggest low fares to it, but um, uh, well, I guess that doesn't quite translate. But but these are the actual these are the actual domains that we're pulling these keywords from. It just gives you a general idea of of uh, of how the how the the underlying you know sort of backendiness sort of works. Um, it helps you to, you know, I guess understand the results that you're getting a little bit better. Um, all right, let's see if I can get this. Uh, let's see here, let's see if I can get this. This thing working for us. Let's do something like cheap tickets. And what I want to do is require Vegas. Okay, so I'm getting Vegas back, but what I want is things that look like Vegas, but are actually misspellings of Vegas. So I don't actually want anything that comes back that has Vegas in it, but it looks like Vegas. You don't, and that's what that tilde will do for us. So I may be using the tilde wrong. Let me see how that's actually used. I may be putting it in the wrong place. Oh, it goes, oh, I have to require it and then put it afterwards, I guess. There should be, it seems like there should be misspellings with Vegas. And OK, what's happening here is we're actually getting a G in which somehow looks to it like Vegas. <laughs> Probably wasn't a good a good 
choice. Let me see if I can get misspelling <laughs> just to get... This is the downside to live idea. demos. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's a... Uh, stickers. Man, um... I think that we end we up having to, like, because I was doing this, uh, and I just can't remember the actual, um, I can't remember, the, I think we need to filter to a, a tighter set of, of keywords, and then, uh, and then we end up um, being able to just come up with the misspellings uh, of the same set of keywords. Um, it... Uh, I don't know. I don't remember what my example was, but uh, but basically, if you use that query, then you you end up getting you end up being able to you know create a set of like those are, these are the misspellings. Here's your misspellings category, um, uh, or at least, uh, which which is kind of useful. But really, I think you generally want to take all the misspellings because you put in like cheap tickets, right? If you if you put this in quotes, you're going to end up with keywords that have cheap tickets in it. But um, especially if you require it. But what you really kind of want is keywords that have cheap tickets uh, and also have misspellings of cheap tickets. Um, and you can do that with this with this tool. It's, um, just trying to figure out like a way to make that work. Maybe if I do require Vegas, then I can get. So we got cheap tickets to, to cheap tickets to Vegas. Um, tickets. Anyway, I don't really know um, that I'm going to be able to come up with this demo. Eh, screw that one. Um, <laughs> So uh, the other thing that you have here, I, I want to make sure that I go over these uh, these sort of ways that you can drill in. You can the first thing is you can drill in by cost per day. Um, you can drill in by uh, search volume. You can filter out like like long tail keywords or um, or actually require keywords to be long tail. Um, you can also look at the number of advertisers, and that's kind of a um, a way of looking for either highly competitive keywords. You know, for example, if you're building like a um, you know a content, um, you know, if you're doing some content marketing, you want to put up some AdSense or something, um, or if you're looking for you know low, uh, you know, places where there's not much competition, um, you can you can actually literally just start from from there. Uh, one thing that you can do here that you really can't do uh, anywhere else is just kind of start looking at really expensive keywords without doing anything else. Um, so this might be something an affiliate would do if they're going to, or you know, someone who has an AdSense site would just look for expensive keywords. Correct. So you could do like, uh, look for keywords that are like greater than $10,000 per day. Like that, I think CPD is like we have all these little like overload things, so you can kind of just guess what it is. I could have put in cost underscore under in day, cost, cost underscore per underscore day, or cost per day. There's a whole bunch of different ones that you can use. So um, yeah, a lot of uh, there's some expensive keywords in here. Let's see what the most expensive cost per day comes out to. It's probably some weird anomaly. And these these numbers come from Google, and you never really like Breville. Do you really think? <laughs> I don't. I don't know what that is, but I, I kind of think that it doesn't cost eighty thousand dollars a day. Um, generally, these there's there's like there tends to be like a few anomalies every month that that uh, that I'm like I don't know why they returned that to us, but truth in advertising, I guess. So. Um, we could look for in here, for example, all key, all, all of these really expensive keywords that start with um, F, which actually might return some really interesting stuff. Let's see. 
Um, we apparently apparently didn't require it, which we can do. Which is probably going to only return F. No? Artist oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I filters, because uh, that's another keyword. Um, but we didn't require this. Now I'm guessing one hundred flowers. Oh, and we, we forced that one to be first. Apartment finder. I really would want it to not. I guess I can do quote maybe. I don't know if I can do this. No, it doesn't, doesn't like that. Maybe I can do S and then star. Don't know if that's even valid syntax probably crash the whole site or something. <laughs> Not really. No, it won't do that. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't like the syntax though. So. Um the other thing that you can do is you can start out with um, um so I can do like this and find like any variation of spy foo that ex that's in here. Uh, or or anything any variation of you know so we get spy ferret. That comes back a lot. Um, I'm guessing that I can also do like a. Uh, this may be where our tilde will come in nicely, um, because we can say, well, just you know, I don't really want to know about spy ferret. So then this actually filters it pretty nicely, in a way that would be fairly difficult to do. Now you can see. Now you can see how uh, how that tilde works, right? Does that make sense? Do you want to mm -hmm. do that again? Okay, so if I do this spy f star, um, it's going to give me like all this spy ferret stuff. And obviously, if I put in like spy foo, it's not going to show me uh, spy f o o. I want to see spy f o o in here. So what I do, what I would do is actually just put this tilde here and it'll show me the misspellings and the, it'll, it'll show me everything, the whole list of things that look like and sound like, in essence, the word spy foo. So you should see, you know, you see soy foo and you see spy fun and you see, and these are all great misspellings of spy foo. Let me get rid of the keyword spy foo so I don't see, you know, I just want to see misspellings in essence. Oh, that's that's jacked up. Maybe I want to get rid of just exactly spy foo. That's really weird. Scott, how does how is it that it's uh it's giving me spy foo. It's doing it right and then uh, even if I get rid of this, it's doing it right and then but like that that sky fi thing, it's just a sorting thing is what's going on there, but I I feel like it should actually just get rid of uh oh yeah, see there's all that that stuff showing up down here. Um but it's I want soy foo to show up on top and spy foo a and sip foo to show up. If I remove spy, oh, 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 oh. Shane, oh, oh. one of our listeners. What's going on here is I'm, I'm not an expert view. <laughs> you got to be an expert view in order to do what I'm doing. <laughs> the expert view is uh, like uh, allows you to eliminate all those, those keyword, all the domains and stuff like that. So this this should do it. Okay, what was one of your customers or your? your well, he customers? had a he had a suggestion for syntax, but um, oh. it was one of it. It turned out to be one of the ones you tried, so it wouldn't work. So we still get these sky fives. I would just kind of like, I guess, maybe just start getting rid of sky star. And um, so this is especially yeah. useful. So rather than 
coming up with every misspelling possible under the sun, which could, you know, fill up an ad group with your 2,000 keyword limit. Mm -hmm. You're querying a database and <clears throat> coming up with misspellings that have actually been commonly searched. Yeah. Which is going to pick up some nice cheap traffic, especially if you're bidding exact match on those terms. Exactly. So, yeah, we can go through these things at this point. Now it's relatively well um, filtered and probably pick up, you know, these guys, spy funds, spoofu, soyfu, spitfu.com, soyfu.com, spoofu.com. Uh, some of these are kind of weird. Um, I guess I would, you know, I might pick up spy fox and sipfu. <laughs> Spy <laughs> maybe that. Pick these guys up. I can obviously export these directly to, I can export them to CSV or I can export them into AdWords. I can kind of like mess around with the bid amount on these, you know, whatever. Um, and I guess those ones all have like a zero cost per click because they're, they're kind of really niche words, so I probably wouldn't do that. But you can send them to a specific URL. And this is kind of like the AdWords import format. Um, oh, yeah, nice. So then you can just import that straight in via spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah or I just copy it to a clipboard and then just paste it right into AdWords. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. I do that. So um, that's uh, that's kind of, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm down with, down with any questions for sure. Um, okay. I, even, I never even brought this. Uh, you know, I, I made this little roadmap thing, and I never even like brought it up. But whatever. Uh, it looks like yeah, you stuck like to it, it pretty well. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> I'm all over the place, but that's you know whatever. A, a couple questions that have come up. Um, there are a couple folks in the UK who have expressed an interest in what you're sharing, but mm -hmm. I think they got a little spooked when you referred to local as being in the US. Are, when they're doing right. their research, are they going to be limited to global results and can they not do local results for the UK? Um, oh no, that's uh, right. Um, we have, we do, everything that we do on SpyFu, um, we do for the US and the UK. So it's, uh, they're good with their, um, the, in terms of the search volume, um, I think that the search volume, uh, the search volume stats are for Google.com from the UK, if that makes sense. Um, that said, when we when we pull when we pull like the organic results and when we run our our searches uh, against. Uh, for the UK data, we'd run it against google.co.uk. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there, um, and I'm pretty sure that that's the way that that works. Uh, that said, I don't know that there'd actually be. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't think that there's actually a difference um, when we when we pull those two things. I think Google actually matches them up um, when we when we pull those search volume stuff. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, a little bit. Maybe too much information, but really, um, that uh, the answer is everything will work just nicely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, the other thing that I'm getting some some feedback for is just some more specific local examples. Um, you know, local dentists, doctors, realtors, whatever. So, is there an application for that? And what would be the best what, way? To... Uh, what 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 are we looking for? We want uh, the, like do we have like a spyfu like um, uh, like uh, a spyfu Denver? Is that what people are asking for? Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, for those of you guys asking, you want to um, <laughs> uh, we got a heckler in there. Um, <clears throat> given Denver Realtors, that's a I own a I own a real estate company, um, oh. but. Anybody else got any suggestions for specifics that we could just use an example? Whether you want to anonymize it or, uh, or uh, you know, pick the the niche in a different city, just give us a, a local example. Um, how about mortgages, San Francisco? 
Okay, uh, yeah, I got you. We can obviously do that. Let's see. Like at least from a keyword perspective, we do. We And I think that maybe that's a two-word guy, isn't it? So, looks like we do a pretty bad job of uh, of, of hitting that like of hitting that local um, the uh, you know generally we 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 do some amount of 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 sort of um, keyword plus location stuff um, but it, there's still a lot of there's a lot of locations um, so so with respect to you know us actually pulling the uh, the local, um, uh, the actual, you know, every combination of like a keyword and uh, and uh, and uh, and a place. We unfortunately don't. We try to like you know get the biggest ones, and you'd kind of think that maybe San Francisco would be would be pretty big. Uh, I wish there was a way to like uh, and actually have a way of doing this. I just don't know that it'll work on the live site. If I could just put in like place or whatever, but um, what to do when you have that situation. There's um, there's a few companies, the way that I would actually approach that sort of that sort of local problem um, is is by looking at uh, let's see, like service magic. Um, or, or like realtor.com, or uh, the, there's a, there's one that I really want to really want to recommend looking at, but oh, is it like reachlocal.com? Seeing what's familiar with reachlocal.com? Um, that one doesn't ring a bell with for me, but that I mean, like it was, is, would like, like lending tree be? If lending tree for like if we're in the mortgage niche, uh, lending yeah, tree are one of the big players. Idea. Sure, and and then what you do on those is you take like their best keywords that are that are generic, and you localize them by um, you know taking every single one of like you know like not you don't want to necessarily take like San Francisco, or you could do San Francisco, but like the more local. The more like super local you can make it, the better, right? And you just kind of like use an Excel spreadsheet uh, and and combine the keywords. Does that make sense? Yep. To how how you do that, you basically just create like a whole bunch of keywords that are uh, you know for Phoenix, you know like Phoenix isn't Phoenix. It's you know it's it's uh, Scottsdale and Peoria and Glendale and uh, Chandler, Gilbert, Awatuki, uh, Apache Junction, Cave Creek, Carefree, like there's a lot of cities, right? And the more local you can make that, uh, just combining the major, the marquee keywords with those super local keywords, that's kind of the secret to uh, to the uh, to, to it. And and you know, you're not going to be able to look. Honestly, we could do like Spy Food Denver. And you could look at like how this, you know, really awesome dentist in Denver is is advertising, and you're not going to really. I mean, he's spending two hundred dollars. He's spending like a two thousand dollars a month, and I guarantee you that he's asleep at the wheel because, and he's not like an expert pay, pay per click manager. You, you, those are if we even if we did that, and we actually get some people that really want us to do a, a local version of Spy Fu. But if you look at that, it's not going to give you as valuable of information um, because 
uh, and, and I have like a whole presentation on how to like figure out like what, what, what you should spend your money on uh, and, and, and what you effectively want to do is eliminate eliminate people's mistakes, right? And when you're spending a small amount of money, you can fall asleep at the wheel pretty much forever. I'll tell you this, I'm asleep at the wheel on my AdWords campaign. I touch it maybe once every six months. I actually look at it every day or something, but I don't really modify anything because I don't spend that much on it. Uh, and so I don't really care whether or not it's like, whether or not I'm actually even profitable. I just spend money on it and I'm probably close to break even and I don't really care. And, uh, you know, like, and it's because I don't spend very much on it. And the people that, um, uh, that spend a lot of money on it, and it's like part of their major, and it's part, it's a major part of their business. Like when you look at Lending Tree, or when you look at Reach Local, or you look at um, what was the other one that I that I just said? Um, uh, oh yeah, Service Magic. Their whole business is based on this. You want to look at them, and look at the major keywords they're buying, and then just hyper localize it for yourself. Looking at the dentist or the real estate agent across town. I don't know. I I wouldn't. I don't think it's a formula for success, to be honest, which is kind of why we haven't made it. Well, there's just yeah, it's, it's, it. I I would tend to agree because there's it's going to be very hard to get any statistical data out of such small yeah. search volumes. But I I really like your suggestion for that for people listening and wanting local strategies. You know, I mean, if you're in newbie PBC, we've we've gone through that specific strategy, and I think this adds an element to that. I mean, because Mike suggested something that's just it makes perfect sense. You go to the biggest player in the market, you find the seed keywords that they're spending the most money on, and I, you know, I would bet dollars to donuts, this donuts that there's going to be a correlation that if you just insert your city modifiers and your zip code modifiers, that that's going to be your best bet as well. Um, because, yeah, I mean, if they're consistently spending tens of thousands of dollars on those keywords. It's making them money. So you could consistently spend hundreds of dollars on those keywords in a local niche by just simply adding the modifiers to the keywords that are working for them at a national level. So yep, that's a great suggestion. And I think I think that you'd get more consistent data that way anyway because you know all of the keyword tools out there and i mean you guys are pulling data from google itself you know they get somewhat haphazard and uh if you guys all know me and anything i've preached whether you're a member or have listened to our free stuff you know that you know you can only rely on this data so much and then you have to pull out your wallet and just buy the traffic and see how it does with your specific website so um i really like mike's suggestion of just Doing that at the at the global level, and then applying your local modifiers, and that would be a great strategy to use. Yeah, and you can actually even estimate um, uh, the the people. People are often like, you know, how can I get, you know, like how can I take like this this you know this portfolio of uh, you know reach locals and, and kind of like figure out how much it, how much is it going to you know. How much traffic am I going to get? How much? Um, how many clicks am I going to get in you know the Tulsa market? I'm like, I, I don't know. I, like, like, what do you want us to do? But like, here's the way to do it. It actually works pretty well, and it's pretty darn accurate. Um, you uh, take the uh, population of Tulsa. Let's say it's you know. Let's say it's. I, I don't have any idea a million or 300,000 people or something. And then you effectively divide that into the, into the U.S. population, and, and, uh, and it, then, then that's your percent of the, uh, the total value. So if you have, if on a keyword you have 1,000 clicks, and 1,000 uh, clicks per, per day, let's say, um, and you want to know what the Tulsa market is going to deliver, your pretty solid estimate is, uh, and they have 300,000 people, and the United States has um, um, 300 million people. Then you effectively just say, well, it's one one thousandth. Tulsa gets Tulsa delivers about one one thousandth of the tra uh, of the clicks uh, as as the U.S. number. So you're looking at about a click a day. And you know, it's it's 
it's it's rough, but it's you know it's not not a bad not a bad means of estimating you know on that local market. Did did you understand that? Does that make sense? Yep. Does that resonate? Yep. Just taking the normal the, the general general population and figuring out what the what the local population is and gives you a pretty 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 reasonable pretty much works and uh, honestly it's it's uh, it's probably better than looking at looking at some of the, looking at the the information that you get back from Google, from Google on that like super local level just my opinion at least you know how to debug it if that makes sense you can be like well I know why my estimate might be wrong I guess I, because I know how I calculated it, but if you look at it, what 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 comes back from Google on like a super local level, it's like, eh, why are they even? Why are they saying that there's 13 clicks coming from Tulsa on this keyword that gets 400 clicks for the entire world? Are they right? <laughs> well, honestly, probably not. It's probably just it's probably just BS. But right. uh, so you can you can estimate it a little bit better just by using some simple population math. Right. Cool. Well, Mike, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to show us um, show us around the system and how how people can use it. And as you've you've volunteered, that a lot of the stuff that you've shown they can do for free and and use just for their own reconnaissance in their own markets and then yeah uh, all the stuff that you see right here is totally free combat here is free uh, I mean like not all of combat you can do two domains for free not three uh, and then the top five results on keyword smart search is is free so is. oh and uh, all of all of uh, keyword group is free so yeah, those are great. That keyword groupie is that's a phenomenal one. I'm surprised you guys are making that free. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably charge for it sometime. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, right. yeah, I really appreciate it. Unless anybody has any uh, urgent questions they've got for Mike, uh, we can let him get back to his day. And uh, again, Mike, thank you so much for for sharing everything with us and showing us around your uh, your awesome reconnaissance tool. And uh, excellent. I appreciate I appreciate the time. Uh, I had a great time. Um, so we went we went a little bit over, but <laughs> hey, no, that's great. More information is always good. Um, Jonathan's asking if there's a deal. Like I said, there's this is a not a pitch fest. There's no offer. There's nothing being made. Uh, Mike's just sharing how to use this tool, both the free and the uh, and the paid stuff. Um, so uh, if you want to join, uh, I mean, you if, you're, if you guys want a deal, I can uh, just have them contact us on live chat or something, and we can uh, and just tell them that uh, that you're they were on your um, on this uh, on your on your webinar, and we'll hook them up with some kind of deal. I don't know what it is. I just you know <laughs> somebody's asking for it. We'll give them a deal, I guess. Okay. Well, why don't do you want to just say that we're. Uh, you guys can figure it out, and th they can ask for a newbie PPC discount. Absolutely. See the live chat button right here? Just click the live chat button, hop on, and someone will someone will pick it up. Awesome. And uh, we'll make that we'll make that an offer. Well, there we go, John. Jonathan, thanks for asking, and you asked, and Mike delivered. So they'll uh, they'll give a discount for anybody who joins. Just uh, just mention that to them that you you heard from Mike on uh, asking for a discount. And uh, they'll get that for you. So, uh, cool. thanks again, Mike. Thanks everyone for joining. You kept a uh, full house of interested viewers. Um, and uh, thanks so much for sharing everything. Thanks a lot. Have a great one. Bye, everyone.